So here's the big question. How do you sell heavy duty parts in a digital world? That's the question. And this is the place where you're going to find the answers. My name is Jamie Irvin, and we are live in five, four, three, two, one. Hello, how are you? Welcome to this live broadcast. I realized that I had my banner up through my intro video, so <laughs> that's when you go live, you don't get a chance to do do-overs and you don't get a chance to edit. So as my intro uh, talks about, this is the weekly live presentation that I do to answer one question. How do I sell heavy duty parts in a digital world? Today, we're going to talk about podcasts. This is a subject that is near and dear to my heart. As many of you know, I am the host of the Heavy Duty Parts Report podcast, and we just celebrated our two year anniversary. We publish over a hundred episodes, and we are really, really starting to grow rapidly with our show. So it has been a wonderful experience for me. Now, what about you? Should you start a podcast? Maybe you are working in sales or in marketing, or perhaps you are in a leadership role at your company. And the question is, is a podcast going to help you to sell more heavy duty parts, to advance your goals as a company and reach more people? Well, the short answer is yes. And then also maybe no. So I guess we'll say the answer is maybe. <laughs> let me let me explain. Uh, with all of our live broadcasts, I, I want you to participate. So if you would like to comment or ask a question, feel free to do so. I'll do my best to get to you. Make sure you put those in early so that uh, I have time to answer them before this broadcast is done. Okay, so let's get back to should you start a podcast? And I kind of said that the answer is maybe. <laughs> and the reason I say that is um, twofold. So if somebody met me today, maybe you're watching today for the first time, you go and check out the heavy duty parts report and you're like, wow, you know, that show is uh, it, it, it's, it's in, in syndication on TNC radio. It's got a really good following. And um, I want to, I want to do that too. Well, if you want to do what I've done, you've got to back up four years because I started podcasting four years ago. Now, I mentioned the Heavy Duty Parts Report has only been around for two years. That means I had a show before the Heavy Duty Parts Report and it didn't work out. So I learned a lot. I learned how to podcast. I learned a lot of lessons about what not to do. Uh, my first podcast, Build a Better Business, I interviewed 150 entrepreneurs. It was an awesome show. I loved it. I loved doing it. But I made so many mistakes. You know, I wasn't focused. The show was too broad. You know, when you think of the, the, the title of that show, Build a Better Business, what industry does that serve? Right? You don't know. So uh, the very first lesson I learned about podcasting was you cannot be broad in your subject matter. There is an expression, you want to be an inch wide and a mile deep. You want to niche down till it hurts. The riches are in the niches, my friends. So if you're going to start a podcast and you sell hundreds of parts, don't be generic. Pick something that is underserved. Pick something that you have a lot of expertise in and that you can go deep, deep, deep into that subject because that is what gets through the noise. That is what reaches people. And so if you are going to start a podcast, I, I think that's the number one thing you want to remember. Be very, very, very specific. And when you think you've niched down enough, go another level. Now, when I was at this crossroads of what do I do in my podcasting career, I've spent two years of my life trying to build this show called Build a Better Business. It didn't work. And I'm going to launch the heavy duty parts report. You know, first thing I did is I looked at podcasts, who is out there, uh, what kinds of podcasts are serving the trucking industry. And I found some podcasts that were about freight. I found podcasts that were about the legal aspects of logistics. Um, 
and and I found a podcast out there that uh, was very popular that start, seemed to talk about everything from the, uh, the the stocks to invest in to logistics. But I didn't find someone that was catering to the heavy duty parts sector of trucking. And so I started the heavy duty parts report. I found my niche. Now, this is really important. Don't go and try to copy what I've done. I actually kind of made that mistake in my first podcast. See, I was inspired by a podcaster named John Lee Dumas, world renowned. I was a guest on his show, episode 1769. Yeah, that's right. He's got over 2000 episodes published. This guy has killed it. He specialized in daily interviews of entrepreneurs. He owns that space. It was impossible to try to disrupt him and, and a handful of others who had really focused on that subject, right? Interviewing daily interviews of entrepreneurs. When I launched the, my first show, you know, I kind of tried to copy him. And first of all, I didn't do daily. And second of all, I just wasn't as good and as focused as he was. And he had like a five-year head start. So if you were going to launch your podcast today, maybe you're a manufacturer, maybe you are a parts distributor. Don't just look at what shows are out there and try to copy them. Uh, you've got to be authentic. You've got to be unique. You've got to be niche down, focused. This is very, very important. So if the answer to my question today, should I start a podcast becomes yes, this is the thing that you have to think about. This is the process you have to go through to decide what is my show? Is it going to be interview based? Is it going to just be me on the mic talking directly to my customers? How am I going to serve my customers and, and how will this help me reach more of my customers? That's what you've got to really focus on. So if you're willing to do all of that, then the answer probably is yes, you should start a podcast. Uh, one thing I want you to think about is as a salesperson, when you go to someone's location and try to have a conversation with them and it's unscheduled, sometimes you can barely get five minutes with them. One of the beautiful things about a podcast, like my podcast, 25 minutes long weekly, that's 25 minutes of pretty much undivided attention of all of the people who listen to my podcast regularly. That is amazing. So if you're a salesperson working for a manufacturer, for a tech company that caters to uh, heavy duty, yeah, I'm talking to you, Matthew Leffler, um, and you're starting a podcast, think about it in those terms. This is this opportunity for, for you to talk directly to potential customers, to existing customers, to address their needs, to serve them better. And it is something that is a little more intimate than a lot of the social media that you do. There's something about, you know, a person having those headphones in, listening to your voice, getting to know you over a period of time where you could really create strong relationships. In fact, I can tell you that last year before the pandemic started, when I was at trade shows, I had people I had never met before coming up to me, shaking my hand, giving me kind of like that bro hug. They felt they knew me intimately because they had spent so much time listening to me and my guests on the heavy duty parts report. So again, from a sales perspective, I mean, the podcast is just such a powerful medium to deliver a very customized, very uh, important message where you're going to serve your customer at a greater degree. Okay. I got, I got to carry on. There's so much more for me to cover in this subject. Do not start a podcast if you are not willing to do it for the long haul. Podcasting requires consistency. For me, I often tell people I'll put out a new episode on Monday, even if the end time started. That's how consistent I am. Y you have to pick an interval. Could be weekly. Doesn't have to be. Could be every, every two weeks. It could be once a month. One of those three intervals is probably best suited for you, especially if you're in B2B. So if you're a manufacturer or parts distributor, you know, a daily show, it's a massive commitment and it's probably not even going to serve your audience very well. So weekly, every two weeks or monthly, any one of those is fine, but whatever one you choose, let everybody know what the interval is and then stick to it. No matter what consistency is extremely important. Now, I also want to temper your expectations. I've been at podcasting for four years. Only in the last few months has my show really started to take off. There is something in podcasting called the hockey stick curve. 
Picture a hockey stick laying flat on its back with the blade pointing up in the air. That's what podcasting is like for a very long time. It's going to feel like no one's listening. You're going to travel the entire length of that hockey stick, which is growing little incrementally, just a little bit at a time. No one feels like no one's listening, right? But every month it's just a little bit better, a little bit better. And then you hit where that curve goes up. And when you hit that, good things happen. So you have to be consistent, but you also have to be willing to put in the effort and time to grow your show. And that is just going to take months, probably more like a couple of years to really get it going. So if you're looking for a quick return on investment for your marketing digital strategy, podcasting is not the way to go. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Podcasting is very powerful, but it takes a lot of time to build up the show to a point where it starts to move the needle on revenue. When it does though, whoo, it's awesome. It is awesome. You know, one thing too, I want to talk about is something called pod fade. This is a real thing. The statistics are clear. The average podcast lasts 12 episodes or six months, whatever comes first. A lot of people have jumped into podcasting with a lot of enthusiasm and they've ended up fading out very quickly. So my recommendation is if you're going to start podcasting, set a significant goal. I will not quit until at least this. In my first podcast, I, my goal was I will not quit until I've done 100 episodes. Well, I ended up doing 150 before I quit. So I met my goal. And I gave myself enough time to find out what's working, what's not, and where should I pivot? When I launched the heavy duty parts report, I did the same thing. I set myself a goal that I said, no matter what, I'm going to do this many episodes. It was another hundred episodes. That's at a weekly show. That's two years. So it's a serious commitment. I've reached a hundred episodes and we're wildly successful and things are going amazing. So I'm not stopping. In fact, I hope I never stop. But the point is, that you may have to try a couple times and this is, and if you have to pivot and if you have to kind of reformat the show because you made some mistakes early on, this could be a two to four year project before you hit the pay dirt, as they say. So again, if you're looking for a quick shot in the arm for sales, this is not the medium for you. You can get way faster results with Facebook ads and with other social media channels and platforms. But podcasting, if you're willing to do the marathon, can pay off huge downstream. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the tech. Don't get overwhelmed with the technology. You need something to record your audio. You need a decent microphone and you need to edit the audio and you need a, a host to host your episodes. So that's what you need. Let's go in reverse order. Start with Buzzsprout. I'm not going to get paid a dime if you sign up to Buzzsprout, but I'm telling you, Buzzsprout is where it's at for podcasters. Super easy to set up, super easy to use, and a just a pile of tools to make your podcast better. I used to have to do Buzzsprout and Aphonics. Now, Aphonics is an AI software that helps you edit and make your audio sound great. Buzzsprout partnered with Aphonics. They're now together. You don't even need to leave the Buzzsprout platform to add on what they call something magic. And it just makes your audio sound amazing. Okay, your microphone. I use a Samson. That's not Samsung like the phone. Samson, like the guy with the long hair in the Bible. The Samson CO1U Pro. That's what I use. That's the microphone I'm on right now. It's a condenser microphone, USB. You don't need a mixer. Plug it right into your laptop. It has some drawbacks, though. It's not, not you know, it is a good mic, but it's not the perfect solution for everyone. Anything Rode, R-O-D-E, high quality stuff. And the ATR2100 for residents of the United States are, that is an awesome microphone for not a big price tag that will really get you there. Don't spend a lot on mics, a couple hundred bucks, and you should be able to just start recording and go. Now, the big secret, if you're going to do interviews, if you're going to have people on, record through whatever you use, Zoom, Teams, Google Meet, uh, StreamYard, like I'm using right now, has a record only option. You know, whatever you use, 
when you're recording your audio, I want you to record it using that tool and also record it using a free downloadable software called Audacity, A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y, Audacity. Use that to record your local your audio locally. The reason why is because the quality will be better. You're not routing it through the internet first. Very, very important. Listen, the five P's apply in podcasting, right? Proper planning prevents poor performance. So if you're going to get into podcasting, guess what? Go back and listen to some of my early episodes. I wasn't that good. I'm still learning and getting better all the time. You're going to suck at the beginning. That's just the honest fact. It's going to take a while to get comfortable, to get used to doing this. Don't stop. If you make the decision you're going to do it, don't let that stop you. You want to just start doing recordings, listen back to them, get better over time, practice, 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 practice. Remember, this isn't a sprint. It is a marathon. Okay. So should you start a podcast? Yes or no? The answer is maybe. It depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a long-term strategy to get a, to build an audience of prospective customers that you can serve at a greater level and provide them with with a more intimate experience of dealing with you, something that'll allow you to show your personality, show your company uh, technical ability, and really be able to reach a small group of, of customers. And in B2B, we don't need tens of thousands. We sometimes only need hundreds or not even that sometimes. Sometimes 10 new customers could represent a million dollars in new business. If you're willing to put in the time, if you're willing to run the marathon, then podcasting is a great strategy. Remember though, niche down till it hurts, an inch wide, a mile deep. Just remember that. If you are not in a position to do everything that needs to be done, and remember, after you're done recording and you've done all of that work, planning the episode, practicing it, and then recording it, you still have to edit it, you still have to publish it, and you still have to promote it. It's a massive commitment. And if that's just too much for you, that's okay. There's an alternative be a guest on as many podcasts as you can. You know, a good friend of the Heavy Duty Parts Report, Scott Boltz, reached out to us and said, Jamie, I was thinking about starting my own podcast. After I looked at how much work it was, I decided I I just don't have the time to do it. Could I be on your show? And could we talk about subjects that are important to me to be able to help get the message out there? I said, absolutely. You know, podcasters like me, content creators like me, we're always looking for opportunities to create content with someone. Scott and I have had many conversations on the Heavy Duty Parts Report. He's been on my live program. He's been on my podcast. We've tackled big industry issues together. He's been like a like a returning guest who's almost like a co-host. And it has been wonderful. And here's the thing. I have a website. I publish all of this content. I give him links that he can point people's attention to. And guess what? He's even gotten business selling after treatment products because of being on my show, because people watched it, got to know him better, right? Got to see what he's all about and then reached out to him and said, Hey, you know, you, you reached out to me six months ago. I watched some of those episodes on the heavy duty parts report. Yeah. I'd like to do business with you. So if you're not going to do a podcast, your company, you as an individual should start reaching out to podcasts and that serve this industry, right? Reach out to Tyler Robertson's podcast, the DL podcast, the right from diesel laptops, come on the heavy duty parts report, reach out to some of the other podcasts out there that are serving the industry and, and, and pitch them ideas of, of different concepts or, or conversations you want to have. I'm sure you're going to find opportunities to be able to represent your company and to get involved with someone else's podcast. And guess what? You just have to show up, be the guest, and you don't have to do any of the work. So that is my recommendation if the answer is no. I hope this has given you some insight. If you would like to work with me directly, I'm a consultant. I'm not just the host of the Heavy Duty Parts Report. I work with companies probably like just like the company you work for. And I help them with their digital strategy, whether it's social, whether it's using podcasts, whether it is adopting a sales channel to be able to bring customers into a a digital experience when they buy your products. That's what I do. So if you'd like to work with me, reach out to me on whatever social channel you're on right now, or send me an email. My email is in 
the show notes of this episode in the uh, body of this episode, whether it's LinkedIn, YouTube, or Facebook. Reach out to me, Jamie at heavydutypartsreport.com or on any of these social channels. We'll get a meeting set up. You can tell me about what's going on and what your goals are. And I'll let you know if I'm in a position to be able to help you reach those goals faster than you would do so if you were completely on your own without the experience that I've gained building the heavy duty parts report. Okay. The other thing I wanted to let you know is, is that next week I'm on holidays. That's right. I'm taking a break. So I will not be doing a live episode. I will be posting on the social channels though. And you can listen to some of our past episodes on the heavy duty parts report. I'm going to include a link. So I will not see you next week, but I'll be back July 8th. We're going to continue our conversation about how to sell heavy duty parts in a digital world. And uh, we're going to talk about how to use YouTube and video to uh, really advance what you're doing. And I'm going to promise you the conversation we have on July 8th is not going to go in the direction you think it's probably going to go in. So tune in. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, I just want to say to everyone, you know, the last 15, 16 months has been tough on everyone. It really feels like we are coming out of the other side of it. Thank you so much for everybody taking some time to uh, tune in to the content I've put out over the last few months. I cannot do it without your support. So just thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you in person at some trade shows, hopefully in the fall. And uh, I hope that you enjoy your summer if I don't get a chance to talk to you again, but make sure to tune back in July 8th. We'll talk about YouTube. All right, take care. Bye-bye.